Hey, and welcome to the next Betty Eye video. And in this one, I wanted to take on Lamborghini's homepage. I brought with me a bunch of suggestions here, which I believe could increase leads. And by leads, I mean things such as getting people into a dealership, getting people to test drive a car, getting people into events, getting them to experience the car, getting them to talk to other drivers, possibly sign up for newsletters and being up to date on uh, yeah, future events and such. Okay, so lead generation, what are the ways we could do this? And I'll also share with you the solution sketch that takes most of these ideas and, and tries to merge them into a yeah, coherent solution. You will notice also that most of these ideas here are ranked uh, with little numbers associated with them. And so the first column here is actually my subjective certainty. That is a kind of a yeah subjective guess whether I think a particular idea is uh, better or worse and, and also by how much, okay? How much confidence do I have? And that ranges from a negative three, which is definitely worse. So we're not going to be referencing any ideas which I think are worse. And we'll be focusing on these here. So a zero is I don't know. A zero has an equal probability or equal chance of working or not working. And a one is a maybe better, two is a better, three is a definitely better. Okay. First one is scarcity and urgency. So I think it's going to be it's a better idea to include how scarce these cars really are. And one way of communicating communicating that is with uh, how many orders are in queue. I don't know how many are in queue, but I'm just guessing here, maybe 900 or so. And so that's a little indicator of how that can be explored, can be uh, communicated. If Lamborghini wanted to explore additional ways, I'm sure there's you know, people could get creative here. Here's another one. Maybe instead of showing how many people, how many people, how many orders are in queue, um, could be showing how many, like what the wait time is in terms of months or so. Um, maybe the production lines could be exposed. How many cars will be expected in a given year? Um, or the visibility of this could also be improved and. Uh, these are more aggressive, more visible, larger, using colors and such. Um, yeah. So that's one idea, showing scarcity. The next idea is to enable audio. So if you visit this homepage here, you will notice that the video plays automatically, yet there's no audio, which probably is a smart move. However, the engine in this little nice car here probably sounds uh, very nice. Okay, and maybe that's a very quick way of experiencing this thing. And hence this little button here, hear the engine. Maybe it's a primary button. Okay, so when you press this, the user, when the user initiates this, uh, the video maybe starts from the beginning and plays the audio so you can hear the engine roar. Okay, higher contrast buttons. This find out more button is super faint. The text is very light, white on yellow, not very easy to read. The contrast of, uh, contrast of these two buttons could easily be improved. Okay, better contrast between the background and the text, boldness of the text, uh, rounded buttons, maybe the depth uh, of, of, of the buttons itself, okay, different ways of making them more visible and, and more legible. The carousel. This homepage here may or may not have multiple carousel items or multiple cars, multiple events circulating. And of course, that has usability issues. I would say that's a maybe in terms of pausing this whole thing and only showing one item at a time. Okay. 
So pausing the carousel. And then on top of that, very much so related to this are exposed options. So in this case here, I decided to show different models as options and maybe they would link to a particular model page pages. All right. We have data for exposing options and here is how this data looks like. So that's uh, pattern 14 is no, lo no longer a neutral pattern and we have four tests for the idea of taking options from pull down menus or, or menus and yeah, making them more visible, sh making them accessible uh, with a median impact, almost 7% increase based on four tests. Here's one test. Here's another one that exposed options. This one was actually negative. There's additional positive tests. So we take these data, we try to sum it together, compare it and get a overall assessment. So next time around when we make these suggestions, we have additional data to back up our suggestions. In this case, what we're going to take is a repeatability score, basically how likely do, do these four tests work positively or negatively. In this case, it's a two and a half and the median. And we take this and on top of our own subjective certainty, we add data from tests. We arrive at 4.5, which is a lot bigger than ones and twos. And of course, this is a very, very strong way of prioritizing. So later on, when we have multiple, multiple ideas and we have to choose what we want to test first, we have a very clear score in terms of probability of what some of the stronger ideas are or the weaker ideas. And on top of that, we also have a median impact, which gives us a bit of a sense of what we could expect from this if we were to A-B test this on its own. So that's exposed options. I have a second little reference here as well. Uh, this line implies a false bottom, or sorry, uh, um, a cutoff for, for, uh, um, for where the screen might end. And purposefully, I'm also suggesting to include these two, at the very least, these two little boxes that are exposing events and local dealers, and also the configuration of your car, which is a tool for yeah configuring car. And yeah, so that's, uh, <clears throat> this is by design. So if someone doesn't care about this particular car, Again, since we're focusing on lead generation, it might be worthwhile to highlight local events and the closest dealer, all right? Next idea would be use of the word local. So local headlines and geo content. So that's showing content that is uh, that is nearby. So if I'm in Toronto, let's show some events from Toronto or North America or, or some Toronto dealers. Cutting out the, those steps where I have to search and, and um, you know, again, this is a global brand, but why not show maybe the most relevant dealers? This brings us to pattern 61. And again, my subjective guess on this is a one, but we're augmenting that with additional data from pattern 61. Here's our pattern. We're watching for, again, for just the local, the use of the word local in a, uh, as a headline. We have <clears throat> one test in favor of this so far, and this test is transforming our confidence with additional repeatability and a median effect. And we take this and we add it into here, and now this idea is gaining strength from real data, okay? So find a dealer, and we're suggesting to make a reference to, hey, see local, local events, local dealers. 
This is by design with A-B tests backing this. Next suggestions, um, news, okay? So we here have news underlined. It's a, it's a subheadline. It doesn't actually link to anywhere. Odd. So instead of doing that, um, we would encourage these headlines to be clickable use proper font styles or, or, or link styles. And, you know, if someone wants to look at all news, why not make this accessible, make this uh, open up a particular long form view of the uh, full news. Okay, that's another suggestion. <clears throat> Remembering red news. So here we see obviously the latest news. Um, I think this could be made better by doing something like this. I just give it a one. So it's a maybe, maybe somewhat of improvement, not too much weight to it. Um, but giving people an idea, hey, you know, like since last time, these are the four new items that appeared and maybe these are the ones that I really looked at in the past. Okay, and also calling this out. Since you last visited, we have four news items, and these are the highlighted ones. And we used this on a good UI some time ago and never really measured it, but I have this belief that perhaps this is something that gets people to come back. They see that this explicitly is refreshing. They are, uh, people are being recognized, and uh, the news that they viewed is being separate from the new news, the most recent. Okay. Other suggestions, uh, chronological ordering or sorting uh, in, a, in a kind of a list uh, is what I'm at here. We have uh, asymmetrical uh, organization. It's it's a little hard to 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 guess what is the you know what is the latest is it um, you know this is probably the first um, removing this ambiguity and just sorting you know the most the most recent at the top in a in a very linear way single axis boring but highly usable okay. What else? Uh, standardizing location information. Okay, so this is in Moscow. This is in Toronto. This is uh, I have to have to kind of figure that out. Um, NYC. Okay, here again because it's all in the headline and these locations uh, are are moving around. I think location is a very powerful way of assessing. Hey, you know, is this for me or not? Okay, maybe I'm just too far away and and. So Moscow, Rome, Toronto, Toronto cities could be listed here. So they're very scannable and it be, can be quickly picked up. Um, clarify this more button. Because it's so spaced out here and uh, doesn't really the, the label doesn't really say what exactly just as discover more I think there's a huge opportunity here to to tie it back into the news in numerous ways and you know you could use proximity you can actually use the word news in here um, and that would remove all ambiguity that this is yeah more news and on top of that remember you know I could also turn this into a link so multiple redundant ways of getting people to read more. Uh, news information. Filter by types of events. Okay, so as we scroll down further, we have um, a similar display of multiple events. And basically, I'm borrowing that same pattern and just listing everything chronologically in a, in a yeah in a list. Um, but I added a little filter here. So we're starting with local events. In this case, locality could be a continent, could be a country, could be a city, depending on 
yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't thought, thought through this too much, but being a little bit more relevant in this case, again, maybe North America, maybe I'm North America, so we show Toronto, New York. <clears throat> um, but I wanted to extend this. I mean, these are these all look like right now racing events. But what if there's other types of events like car shows? Uh, maybe there's some exclusive events for existing customers, or maybe exclusive events that allow me to get to know some customers and allow non-customers and leads to mingle with customers. So um, allowing to people to to uh, to filter through some of these so um, they could better uh, assess whether uh, and identify which events are relevant to them. Adding calls to action, okay? Most of these events, it takes a while before you can actually do something if we dig further through these pages. And at the very least, why shouldn't this page have, and if, if again, if we're, if we're gonna be focusing on lead generation, uh, having some CTAs here that, you know, starting with sign up for updates like these, maybe is one idea. Um, if this is an exclusive event, maybe I can request an invitation for this event. Or if it's uh, open to the public, um, some sort of racing event, maybe all I need to do is add it to the calendar, okay? So these little hooks here uh, that could be acted upon, okay? <clears throat> and one last little suggestion on a menu. A, usability, uh, a bit of a usability tweak here. So when you hover on top of the models, two levels open up here. This is level one and this is level two. And basically what happens is that as you're uh, looking at a particular level one item and you want to scroll towards, let's say, a particular car, what happens is you cross here. Let me enable a little better preview of this. Color this little line path. Um, this next car is in the path of the of this of this action here of this of this movement and these items completely disappear and the menu for the next item is is shown okay so a major little major well major or or, or non major but basically that could be a a, a first point of frustration as uh, as people want to kind of get to uh, to the next uh, to the menu and the the items disappear okay so one uh, this could be improved by uh, better code and anticipating the intent and making these kind of the behavior of this menu more um, more forgiving so that they don't switch as quickly okay that's what I have for lead generation and um, for lead generation ideas. Hopefully these were useful. If you have additional ideas, please share them in the comments. And uh, if you want to refer to additional patterns that we have, all of our patterns are accessible on goodui.org slash fast forward. We have 61 patterns, 99 tests already, adding new, one, new tests every month. And basically, members get access to all the tests, and uh, could use to, which could be used to um, increase your conversion rates and make better uh, design decisions. All right, thanks so much for watching. Again, leave your comments, and uh, hopefully, it was useful. Thanks.